वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज द सेकेंड एंड द लास्ट पार्ट ऑफ चैप्टर टू सेक्शुअल रिप्रोडक्शन इन फ्लावरिंग प्लांट्स इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव डिस्कस अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ फ्लावर रिप्रोडक्शन टाइप्स ऑफ रिप्रोडक्शन एंड डेवलपमेंट ऑफ मेल गेमिटोफाइट दैट इज द प्रोसेस ऑफ माइक्रोस्पोरोजेनेसिस एंड इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट development of female gametophyte then fertilization pollination embryonic development and post fertilization changes in flowers so let us discuss our today's topic female reproductive unit or pistil gynoecium is the innermost whorl of the flower and it is the female reproductive part of any angiospermic plant it is made up of one or more carpels or megasporophylls a single unit of female reproductive system is called as the carpel or pistil and like all other floral parts like calyx corolla and adrusium it is also a part of modified shoot or it is a modified leaf which bears female megaspores because it is large in size that female spores are large in size hence they are called as the megaspores all the carpels of a flower together constitute to form gynoecium in a flower carpel may be one two or many if uh, there is only a single carpel is present then it is called as the monocarpillary if there are two carpels are present then it is called as the bicarpillary and if there are more than two carpels are present then this uh, condition is called as the polycarpillary condition this carpels may be fused then the condition is called as the syncarpus condition this carpels carpels may be free from each other this condition is called as the apocarpus conditions a single carpel consists of three parts stigma style and ovary stigma is the uppermost broad part or the receptive part which receive pollen grains during the process of pollination and helps in the process of sexual reproduction a style is a long tubular for uh, long tubular structure which provide passage for the transfer of uh, pollen grains uh, or male gametes from stigma to the ovary and the basal swollen portion which is attached to the thalamus is called as the ovary ovary is the main uh, reproductive part of a female reproductive system in angiospermic plants which forms ovules ovule may be single chambered or having more than one chamber if it is having a single chamber then it is called as a monolocular or unilocular ovary and if it contain many chamber then it is called as the multilocular condition or multilocular ovary inside the ovary placenta bears ovules and in each uh, locule or in each ovary there may be one or many ovules are developed now the structure of ovule Uh, ovule is developed or arises from the primordial cell in on placenta the short stalk through which ovule attach with the placenta is called as the funicle the primordial cell grow into a mass of cells forming new cells which forms uh, the body of ovule the body of ovule is protected by two protective covering which are called as integuments they form a continuous covering around the ovule or nucellus 
but they are absent at a small tip. This tip is called as the micropyle, which provides passage for the entry of pollen grain during the process of reproduction. The basal part of ovule is called as the chalaza or chalazal end, which lies opposite to the micropylar end. The cells of new cells are rich in reserve food material so as to provide nutrition to the developing embryo. A single embryo sac or female gametophyte located in the new cells, which is developed from megaspore. As you can see in the diagram, funicle is a basic basal stock, uh, basal stock which connect uh, embryo to the placenta. Then the connection between the funicle and integument is called as the hilum. Center part contain embryo sac which is surrounded by the cells of nucellus. Nucellus is uh, basically made up of uh, cells which are rich in nutritional contents. Now here in this diagram you can see uh, the diagrams of uh, uh, mature embryo sac. This we will discuss in the later part. Second diagram you can see a dissected flower of hibiscus showing pistil. First in diagram A you can see stigma style ovary which is lying on the thalamus. Second portion, uh, second diagram showing the stigma, the structure of stigma and a syncarpus ovary where uh, ovary contains many chambers and uh, all the chambers are connected with each other. C diagram is showing a multicarpillary uh, ovary in which uh, all the chambers are free from each other. And the last diagram uh, is showing a detailed uh, structure of a typical anatropus ovule. Megasporogenesis and development of female gametophyte. During the process of uh, development of female gametophyte, one of the new cellar cell, the cell of new, new cellars, uh, in the micropylar region is differentiated into megaspore mother cell. In the early uh, stages of the development, the central con center contain is uh, occupied by this cell. And each cell is able to produce a megaspore. So one of the cell from the new cells, it is start differentiating or proliferating to form megaspore mother cell. The cell is large, contain dense cytoplasm, and in, and is uh, it is having a prominent nucleus, which can be easily identified. Then this uh, megaspore mother cell is, uh, undergoes meiotic cell division or the meiosis cell division to form four haploid megaspore tetrad cells. So these four cells are arranged in a structure called as the tetrad. So this stage is called as the megaspore tetrad stage. Out of this four megaspore tetrad, three megaspores get degenerated during the uh, further development and only one megaspore become functional. Then functional megaspore is the first cell of female gametophyte. Its nucleus undergoes mitotic cell division. Now, listen carefully. Its nucleus undergoes mitotic cell division to form two nuclei, which moves towards the two opposite polar ends, and then they again divides into two, and then again this two nuclei divide into four nuclei. So it means uh, on uh, both the polar ends, uh, four nuclei are present. Then out of this polar nuclei, two polar nuclei, they reaches to the center and then they form polar nuclei and three cells remain at the opposite polar ends. On the chalazar end, three antipodal cells are developed and on the micropylar end, two synergids and one egg cell is developed. Now let us see the diagram step by step what events take place during the process of uh, uh, development of uh, female gametophyte. First, you can see 
on the micropylar end one of the cell of the new cellus start proliferating and it increases in size to form megaspore mother cell now this megaspore mother cell in the diagram a as it is mentioned here in the diagram a uh, the megaspore mother cell is divided into two cell this stage is called as the megaspore dyad then in the diagram c in the diagram uh, next diagram you can see that uh, this megaspore dyad further divide to form four uh, megaspores in a linear sequence so now this is the megaspore tetrad condition here one megaspore mother cell divided into four daughter cells this is the meiotic cell division now out of this four megaspore tetrad three get uh, disintegrated and one become functional megaspore one become functional megaspore now in the first diagram in the first diagram you can see that uh, the nucleus divide and uh, it is uh, the two daughter nuclei it uh, travel towards the two polar end they further divide into two and then four as a result of which they give rise to the eight nucleated stage now out of this eight nucleus uh, two uh, nuclei from the each polar end they reaches to the central part and uh, they form central cell and uh, which is having two polar nuclei three cells of uh, um, chalazal end they form antipodal cells and three uh, cells of micropylar end uh, form two synergy cells and one xl and finally it uh, developed into a an embryo sac now as you can see in the diagram on the chalazal end in the last diagram i am talking about in the on the chalazal end three antipodal cells are present on the micropylar end two synergies along with the filiform apparatus uh, one xl is present this filiform apparatus guides the entry of a pollen grain or male gametes during the process of uh, fertilization or reproduction then now moving on to the next topic that is the pollination now what is pollination the process of a transfer of pollen grain from male reproductive part to the female reproductive part of a flower or between the two flower is called as the pollination on the basis of mechanism uh, pollination can be divided into different types uh, like as uh, self pollination and uh, cross pollination if the transfer of pollen grain takes place within the same flower uh, from the male reproductive part to the female reproductive part then it is called as the self pollination or autogamy when the transfer of pollen grain takes place between the two flowers of a same plant or between the two flower of the uh, two different plant but of the same species then it is called as the cross pollination there are there are various uh, agents or uh, factors which uh, plays a, a very vital role in the process of uh, pollination these factors or agents uh, these are called as the agents of pollination these agents are water wind insects uh, birds and bat bat they can be uh, classified into two categories that is the biotic factor and abiotic factors as you can see in the diagram in the diagram a it depicting the process of self pollination where pollen grains uh, from uh, the same flower reaches uh, to the stigma in the diagram a you can see uh, pollen grain from uh, uh, the male reproductive part that is anth anther they travel towards the uh, stigma of the same flower and in the diagram b you can see the uh, pollen grain or uh, from the anther or the male reproductive part of one flower it uh, traveling to, uh, towards the uh, stigma of uh, a, a different flower M this flower may be of the same plant or may be uh, of another plant of the same species so this is the uh, cross pollination uh, here are the definitions of the types of uh, pollination first is autogamy it is the transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of the same flower uh, anther and the stigma lie close to each other uh, in a way that uh, self pollination occurs so in, for this kind of condition it is uh, one most important condition is uh, 
द फ्लावर मस्ट बी बायसेक्चुअल और हर्मोफ्रोडाइट सो एज टू सो एज बोथ द काइंड ऑफ रिपोर्डक्टिव ऑर्गन मे बी प्रेजेंट इन द सेम काइंड ऑफ सॉरी सेम फ्लावर सो वेन फ्लावर्स आर सेल फ्लावर्स आर हर्मेफ्रोडाइट और बायसेक्चुअल सो इट एंश्योर द चांसेस ऑफ सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन सेकेंड इज द गिटोनोगेमी इट इज द ट्रांसफर ऑफ पोलिन ग्रेन फ्रॉम एंथर टू द स्टिग्मा ऑफ अनदर फ्लावर ऑफ द सेम प्लांट नाउ रीड इट केयरफुली ट्रांसफर ऑफ पोलिन ग्रेन फ्रॉम एंथर टू द स्टिग्मा ऑफ अनदर फ्लावर ऑफ द सेम प्लांट इट मीन्स मेल फ्लावर इज प्रेजेंट ऑन वन ब्रांच एंड फीमेल फ्लावर मे बी प्रेजेंट ऑन सम अदर ब्रांच सो जेनेटिकली बिकॉज बोथ द फ्लावर्स आर प्रेजेंट ऑन द सेम प्लांट जेनेटिकली इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ ऑटोगेमी और सेल्फ पोलिनेशन but as transfer of pollen grain takes place from one flower to another flower therefore physiologically that is functionally it is a type of cross pollination this exam is uh, this question is asked uh, uh, so many times in the uh, final examination so keep it uh, in mind that uh, gitanogamy is a, it is a kind of uh, uh, from genetical point of view it is a autogamy or self pollination but from physiologically point of view or from functional point of view it is a type of cross pollination the third type of uh, pollination that is uh, allogamy it is also called as the allogamy or xenogamy it is a transfer of pollen grain from anther to the stigma of one plant to another plant of a same species so when a uh, transfer of pollen grain takes place between the two flower of the same species or between the two flower of the two plants of the same species then it is called as the allogamy or cross pollination or xenogamy here is a brief uh, flow chart of the uh, pollination as you can see pollination it is of two types self pollination and cross pollination or xenogamy self pollination is again of two types autogamy and gitanogamy autogamy takes place in the bisexual flower when uh, male and female both kind of reproductive organs are present in the same flower so transfer of pollen grain takes place from pollen uh, from uh, androecium to the gynoecium of the same flower that is the autogamy or the self pollination and then a uh, second type of cell pollination is gitanogamy where transfer of pollen grain takes place from uh, one flower to another flower of the same plant then uh, cross pollination or xenogamy so there are various factors which play an important role in the process of uh, uh, cross pollination these are abiotic factors and biotic factors abiotic factors further classified into two categories that is wind pollination and water pollination while biotic factors are different kinds of organisms or animals which uh, helps in the transfer of pollen grain from one flower to another flower uh, like uh, insects uh, bats snails birds uh, ants also and many other animals also uh but uh, there are some uh, scientific uh, terminological words are used for example when pollen grains are transferred by insects from one flower to another flower then the process is called as the entomophily and the kind of flower is called as the entomophilous flowers then chiropterophily where the transfer of pollen grain takes place uh, through the bat then next one is the malacophily where transfer of pollen grain takes place with the help of uh, a snail this kind of pollination usually found in some aquatic plants and last is the ornithophily where birds plays an important role in the transfer of pollen grain from one flower to another flower so this is a brief chart of the uh, pollination now there are some uh, uh, devices or adaptations in flower to promote uh, self pollination to promote cross pollination so let us discuss them one by one first of all devices for autogamy uh, that uh, what are the adaptation in flower which help them for self pollination so number one is simultaneous or synchronized uh, maturation of anther and pistil it means uh, ki, uh, male and female reproductive parts or the endosperm gynosperm and in them endosperm and gynosperm uh, male and female gametes they developed at the uh, same time so as to ensure the chances of or probability of self pollination number 2 the position of uh, male and female uh, reproductive part that is anther and stigma lies uh, close to each other so as uh, so as to uh, facilitate the transfer of uh, pollen grain from androecium to the gynoecium or to the stigma of the flower bisexually one of the most important factor which is uh, most important adaptation which is necessary for the uh self pollination that is the bisexuality it means uh, a flower contain both the types of reproductive organs 
then only cell pollination is possible this here is one more uh, new scientific or uh, terminological word is cleistogamous flower what is cleistogamy when flowers are closed it means uh, its reproductive parts are hidden or are not exposed to the outer environment so it is very difficult for other uh, biotic or abiotic factors uh, to uh, help in the process of cross pollination so in such kind of flower because they are they are having a close kind of structure petals are closed so it is very difficult to uh, difficult for uh, insects or for other animals to reach to the uh, pollen grains so they are usually self pollinating the cleistogamous flowers are usually closed flower which are bisexual and uh, which ensure the maximum chances of uh, self pollination next is devices for uh, xenogamy means adaptations uh, in flowers for cross pollination that is flowers are unisexual or dioecious uh, if uh, flowers are unisexual it means either flower is uh, male or either flower is uh, female so in this kind of condition self pollination is impossible then pollen release and stigma receptivity are not synchronized ki in this kind of uh, uh, flowers uh, it may be possible if flowers are bisexual but the release or uh, of a pollen grain and stigma receptivity are not synchronized means they they become functional at two different times it means the the formation of gametes is not synchronized so in this condition uh, self pollination is very difficult so hence they um, promote or they support cross pollination then different orientation of anther and stigma of flowers it means uh, the position it may be possible ki that flower is uh, uh, bisexual but the position or the orientation of a male and female reproductive part are in such a way that they cannot be uh, in direct contact of each other and it is or it is very difficult uh, for anther to reach to the stigma in this kind of condition they promote or they use cross pollination and then last and one of the most important topic from the exam point of view that is self incompatibility uh, sometimes it happens ki that uh, pollen grain of the same species of the or of the same flower they are unable to fertilize with the stigma of the uh, fertilize to the ovule of the same uh, species or of the same flower so this phenomena in which uh, pollen grains are not compatible with the ovule or the female gamete uh, of the same flower this condition is called as the self incompatibility it means uh, the pollen grain or the male gamete of the same flower they are unable to fertilize the female uh, gamete of the fl flower so in this kind of situation plants uh, promote or plants use cross pollination to ensure reproduction now there are certain adaptations are found in the uh, different kinds of flower uh, for <clears throat> different modes of uh, pollination like uh, uh, adaptations uh, of a wind pollinated flower ki what are the adaptations are found in flowers for wind pollination the first is pollen grains are light non sticky or dry sometimes may be winged so this characters help uh, the dispersal of pollen grain easily usually uh, through uh, wind or air uh, anthers are well exposed means uh, they are exposed out or they are ex uh, arranged in exposed condition so as to, so that they can be easily blown away with the help of air then large and feathery stigma stigma are large and feathery so as to they, they can easily receive the pollen grain when they reaches to the stigma flowers uh, arrange, arrange as inflorescence so when flowers are arranged in a bunch Uh, in a bunch as inflorescence so first of all it is necessary to know what is inflorescence the arrangement of flower and floral bud on the axis of the stem is called as the inflorescence it means on a single axis there are more than one may be possible 2 5 10 100 1000 1, there is no uh, an upper limit of the number of flower so when a large number of flowers are arranged, arranged on the same axis so they increase the chances of chances of wind pollination and then for uh, presence of a single ovule so these are the characteristic features of a flower which uh, pollinated through wind then adaptation of water pollinated flowers uh, 
seen in uh, summer class like Pelisneria and Hydella and uh, Zostra. So this kind of adaptation, you, uh, obviously, they they must be found in aquatic plants, like in Pelisneria, male flowers released on a uh, on a water surface and uh, female flowers reaches the surface for pollination. Actually, uh, Velis, in Velisneria, male flowers release uh, uh, pollen grains or gametes uh, on water surface and female flower reaches to the surface for pollination. In sea grasses, uh, pollen grains are long ribbon-like and uh, carried a uh, passively to submerge the female flowers and uh, a presence of mucilage coating around the pollen grain. So these are some uh, characteristic features of adaptation in water pollinated flowers. Next uh, is Adaptations in uh, insect pollinated flowers. Uh, flowers are usually uh, large in size so that they can be easily visible and uh, they can be easily visible from a distance. Then flowers are brightly colored and showy so that they can attract insects for the process of cross, cross pollination. Uh, if the flowers are small, grouped into inflorescence. Suppose if the size of the flower is very small, so they uh, arranged, they grouped to form a, uh, an, an inflorescence. So when the, there is a large number of flowers are present on a single stem axis, so it is easyable, easily uh, visible to the insects. Then the next characteristic feature of the insect pollinated flower is they are highly fragrant means they produce they are having a very unique kind of smell so that they can attract insects then uh, produce nectar to flower uh, produces nectar as a reward of uh, pollination why because when insects uh, they came near to the flower for the in search of food uh, for nectar when they reaches into the flower to the flower then pollen grain stick to their body and uh, in this way they help in the transfer of pollen grain from one flower to another flower the plant produces nectar we can say as a reward for their uh, reproduction which is uh, helped by uh, insects then sticky pollen is stigmatic surface that uh, uh, the pollen grains are smaller in size light in weight they are sticky so that they can be easily carried by uh, insects from one flower to another flower then provide rewards to animal pollinators such as nectar food or pollen or provide safe place for laying eggs then the next topic is pollen pistil interaction what is pollen pistil interaction the way in which uh, pollen grain reaches to the uh, uh, female reproductive part and then they interact how they fuse with the female gamete so this phenomena this uh, uh, mutual interaction between the male and, male and female gametes is called as the pollen pistil interaction simply we can see we can say that a kind of uh, adaptation or a arrangement for uh, fertilization the recognition of compatible pollen it is the interaction between chemical components of pollen and those of stigma. Definitely when the pollen grain of the same species reaches to the stigma, it may be possible that uh, uh, pollen grain from some other species, they reaches to the uh, stigma of the flower. But uh, due to the differences in their chemical composition, due to the uh, difference in their structure, uh, this uh, pollen grain from the other species are uh, non-compatible uh, or we can say they are incompatible for the uh, uh, ovule or the uh, stigma of the flower then germination of pollen and development of male gametophyte that is compatible pollen starts its germination stimulated by a certain secretion of stigma now if uh, the pollen grain uh, of the same species reaches to the stigma of the same species then what happened a uh, pollen grain uh, is pollen grain they start germinating uh, uh, germinate to form a pollen tube uh, through the stigma and then to, towards the uh, style finally this pollen tube reaches to the uh, to the ovule part or the towards the embryo sac where egg cell is uh, present uh, compatible pollen starts its germination stimulated by a certain secretion of stigma. Uh, entine grows out, uh, grows out uh, through one of a germ pore. Obviously, 
pollen grains uh, as we have already discussed in the previous video ki pollen grain is contain two layer that is exine and intine exine is made up of sporopollenin uh, and uh, intine is it is made up of cellulose and pectin so there is a, a minute pore or aperture is present uh, on the surface of uh, pollen grain uh, which is called as the germ pore through which pollen tube uh, is formed then content of pollen mu in, um, uh, moves into the tube so that is vegetative and generative cells or two male gametes uh, try to recall this that uh, in a mature uh, pollen grain the, uh, uh, it is dehiscent at the two cell or three cell stage one cell is a vegetative cell and other cell is generative cell that we have already discussed so this uh, two cell or three cell stage it moves towards the pollen tube into the style and then towards the ovary Pollen tube grows towards the tissue of stigma and style by secreting enzymes to digest them and enter ovule through the micropyle. So that is we are discussing about that. Ki, um, uh, pollen tube it start grow through, uh, through the stigma then towards the style. How it is it moves forward? It releases some uh, uh, enzymes or some chemical substances which which form the uh, pollen tube in the uh, through the stigma then towards the, through the style. Then it enters the embryo sac through filiform apparatus of one synergy to liberate male gametes. That we have already discussed. Ki, uh, when a, a pollen tube reaches to the uh, ovary, it reaches towards the ovule, and uh, filiform apparatus, which is uh, present near to the uh, synergy, they um, induces the entry of uh, pollen grain or the male gamete. Uh, through this and only so pollen grain they enter uh, through the synergies through the filiform apparatus towards the synergy and then one of the pollen uh, one of the two male gametes uh, one fertilizes to the uh, pollen nuclei and one fertilizes to the uh, egg cell that we will discuss in the further part next part now as you can see in the diagram in the first diagram you can see here uh, there are uh, pollen uh, grains are present on the surface of the stigma then they form pollen tube this pollen tube reaches towards the to, to, uh, towards the style and from style it reaches to to the uh, embryo sac or uh, then in the embryo sac it entered through the micropylar end or to, towards uh, through the synergies to fertilize the egg cell Second, in the second diagram you can see this is the enlarged uh, view that is uh, pollen tube it enter into the embryo sac through the filiform apparatus here synergies are also present and egg nucleus is you can easily uh, see so one of the male gamete uh, out of the two two male gamete which is released uh, by the pollen grain uh, fertilizes the a central cell or to the pollen nuclei and one fertilize the egg nucleus or egg cell now double fertilization it is a uni uh, one of the uh, most unique characteristic feature of uh, angiospermic plant here release of two male gametes from pollen tube into the cytoplasm of uh, synergids as we have uh, discussed in the previous slide that uh, each uh, uh, pollen grain it releases two uh, male gamete into the cytoplasm of synergies. Now, fusion of mal one male gamete with egg cell is called as the syngamy. Now, here fertilization or the reproduction is over. We can see that uh, fusion of male and female gametes takes place. So, one male gamete fuses with the uh, egg cell or the female gamete. So, this process of fusion of gamete is called as the fertilization. Here, it is called as the syngamy, which results in the formation of a diploid zygote. And form zygote 2n it is written here key fusion of one male gamete and one uh, with one egg cell called syngamy and form zygote which develops into embryo so when um, male gamete fuses with the uh, egg cell they form zygote this zygote further uh, develop and by the process of embryogenesis it developed into embryo then fusion of second male gamete with the polar nuclei of central cell to form primary endosperm nucleus now the second male nuclei which is coming uh, uh, from the pollen tube it fertilizes the polar nuclei as a result of which a triploid triploid endosperm is formed this triploid endosperm is called as the primary endosperm nucleus now a syngamy and triple fusion occur in a 
in an embryo set the phenomena is also called as the double fertilization as you can see the fertilization takes place twice first between the uh, at the time of fusion of male and female gamete that is male gamete and egg cell that is the first fertilization and then second fertilization takes place uh, between the second male gamete and polynuclei so as here two uh, uh, fertilization takes place twice this process is called as the double fertilization and as uh, here uh, uh, three uh, nuclei or three cells are fused where that a uh, uh, central cell or two polynuclei and uh, one male uh, uh, secondary nuclei so that is called as the triple fusion so double fertilization and triple fusion is the characteristic feature of uh, most of the angiospermic plants now what are the post fertilization changes or post fertilization changes that is uh, development of endosperm so how it is takes place that we have already discussed that when a second male, uh, male gamete it uh, fertilizes the polynuclei it forms a triploid endosperm then second point is development of embryo when first male gamete fertilizes the egg cell it forms a zygote zygote further develop into embryo then maturation of ovule into seed after fertilization after reproduction uh, after the fusion of gametes that ovule is then uh, developed or modified into a seed and the outer covering that is the ovary the part of the ovary forms the fruit of the plant endosperm now it is the important topic from exam point of view therefore we are taking it separately uh, endosperm is developed uh, its development precedes embryonic development there are three methods of embryonic development nuclear cellular and helobial in a nuclear uh, type of uh, primary endosperm uh, nucleus divides mitotically without cytokinesis and endosperm is uh, free nuclear so in this kind of uh, prime uh, uh, development uh, the primary endosperm nucleus it divides many times by the process of mitotic cell division uh, but uh, uh, nu nucleus is divided but cytoplasm is not divided the cell wall formation is not takes place around the nucleus so it uh, uh, results in the formation of a many nucleated endosperm means uh, endosperm which is having a uh, many free nucleuses without the formation of cell wall this is the nuclear endosperm okay then uh, this uh, uh, primary endosperm nucleus what is the function of this pn it uh, provide a nutrition to the developing embryo but the egg cell which is present uh, near to this uh, synergy uh, uh, this egg cell fuse with the uh, male gamete to form zygote and zygote further develop develop into embryo so this primary endosperm nucleus provide nutrition to that developing embryo if endosperm is completely utilized by the embryo during the process of development if uh, endosperm is completely utilized by the embryo during the process of embryonic development then the seed become non albuminous means uh, it do not contain uh, any part of the endosperm so such kind of seeds are called as the non albuminous but if uh, endosperm is not completely consumed by the embryo during the process of embryonic development uh, uh, so in this uh, type of seeds uh, um, some part of endosperm is remain present uh, such kind of seeds are called as the albuminous seeds it means seeds are of two types albuminous seeds and non albuminous seeds if endosperm part is present in the seeds then they are called as the albuminous seeds if uh, uh, endosperm is completely consumed by the embryo during the embryonic development then it is called as the non albuminous seeds then embryo as we have already discussed uh, that uh, zygote is uh, then divided mitotically to form proembryo and um, proembryo uh, further develop into embryo uh, zygote divide mitotically and form proembryo then it develop into globular and heart shaped embryo that we will see in the next uh, uh, slides and a heart shaped embryo and then horse shoe shaped mature embryo with one or two cotyledons depending upon the type of the plant because we, we know already Key is the plant which contain a single cotyledon are called as the monocots the plant which contain two cotyledons are called as the dicotyledons now here in this diagram you can see uh, the process of embryonic development uh, look at uh, it uh, closely and uh, 
लर्न इट दैट फर्स्ट इज जाइगोट फर्स्ट स्टेज द सिंगल सेल्ड जाइगोट स्टेज नाउ दिस जाइगोट डिवाइड माइटोटिकली बाय द प्रोसेस ऑफ माइटोसिस इट डिवाइड्स इनटू टू सेल्स वन इज द टर्मिनल सेल सेकंड इज द बेसल सेल नाउ दे फर्दर डिवाइडेड इनटू फोर सेल्ड स्टेज यू कैन सी टू सेल एम्ब्रियो एंड टू सस्पेंसर सेल्स नाउ दिस टू सेल एम्ब्रियोनिक स्टेज फर्दर डिवाइडेड इन यू कैन सी फोर एंड देन इट फॉर्म अ ग्लोबुलर स्टेज and the the lower cells of the suspensor cell you can see it enlarge in size okay then in the ne uh, next diagram you can see um that globular stage is further developing like a heart shaped structure so this stage is called heart uh, shaped or heart stage where embryo form a heart shaped structure it is attached with the hypophysis uh, hypophysis to the suspensor cells and in the last diagram you can see uh, it is this uh, uh, stage is called as the torpedo stage where um, this embryo developed two cotyledons now remember now take a note of it that this is the development of a dicot embryo because here two cotyledons are formed between the two cotyledons a tip like structure is present which form, which form the plumule or the shoot meristem and the lower part is called as the root meristem or the radical part so it is the embryonic development of an angiospermic plant now here uh, there are some special uh, kinds of reproduction is also there uh, that is uh, apomixis or agomospori agomospori now what is this uh, seeds are formed without the process of fertilization so when seeds are formed in a plant or in a ovary or in a flower uh, without the process of fertilization then it is called as the apomixis how it is possible that seeds are formed without the process of fertilization because you, as we have study uh, just uh, uh, now ki seeds are formed after the process of fertilization but sometime it happen ki that a diploid egg cell developed into embryo without the process of fertilization i am repeating it again it may develop if a diploid egg cell diploid egg cell developed into embryo without the process of fertilization number 1 number 2 if cells of new cells start developing into embryo and pushed into the embryo so when the uh, either the diploid egg cells start dividing as an embryo or the cells of new cells they start developing like an embryo so they form uh, seeds without the process of fertilization so this is uh, this phenomena is called as the apomixis and second phenomena is polyembryony what is polyembryony presence of more than one egg uh, uh, in embryo sac is called as the polyembryony if more than one egg may be formed in embryo sac this condition is called as polyembryony if more than one embryo sac formed in an ovule that is also uh, the poly, uh, the polyembryony other cells like synergids or new cells developed into embryo how it is possible that a single embryo sac may uh, having Uh, more than one embryo because in general in embryo sac there is only one egg cell it means in one embryo sac there must be only a uh, single uh, embryo should be formed but sometime it happens that the cells of synergids or the cells of new cells they start multiplying and they start developing in uh, like an embryo so in this condition as in a single ovary or in a single ovule uh, or in a single embryo sac more than one embryos are formed so this situation is called as the this condition is called as the polyembryony this kind of uh, development is found in most of the uh, citrus family plants uh, orange lemon uh, and in uh, mango onion groundnut mango onion groundnut are not citrus fruit but in this uh, plants also polyembryony is present so students this is the last uh, topic of the chapter now our chapter is finished revise this if you have any doubt you can ask me thank you very much